that's okay. But when when you look at everything that he did, Chris, in office at that moment, there's videos of this all day long, but you'll see him. He says in every aspect, like for an example, he says, we don't worship a government, we worship God. So he gave, what's the first thing he did when he first became in office? He said, we thank you, God, for the opportunity to be here. He gave God thanks immediately. So I say, even though he may have been a 100% accurate, like, you know, some people, no one's actually 100% at anything that they do. But he wasn't, you know, the, he wasn't top of the line, you're Billy Graham Christian. But he was still a man of God in the White House who loved God. No matter what you say. And he gave God thanks and everything. But yet the left thinks it's all evil and that it's racist. And they even they they even state now that the American flag is racist. And they're trying to do away with that. You watch, and I hate to say this because there's probably a lot of people who listen to me in this area. But you watch that they don't make that American flag illegal now to flag or fly. And yet they make the pride flag the flag of choice. You watch. You watch that. The gay flag. Yep. The gay and lesbian flag you watch is what you're talking about. Yep. You watch the new American flag become that pride flag. You watch it. Wow. I hope not. You watch what happens. You watch I hope it. not. I hope not either, but just think about it. They're trying to make the American flag against the law now because it's racist. It is not racist. It actually displays our freedom. It flies in freedom for everything that we held dear to us. And trust me, we don't hold being gay dear to us anymore. We did at one point. Don't get me wrong. We were we were we were in that area to begin with, and we, we were fruits. Yeah, I'm not going to be mean to somebody and say call them fruits, but we were gay. We were gay as a $3 bill back in our day. And it wasn't that we were specifically gay. It was more or less that we thought... That we was, thought we were gay. We thought we were. And the people convinced us that it's okay to be that way, so we figured we were. I, I, when I first was born, I didn't say I'm gay and I'm this and that. So we weren't actually... We weren't exactly gay. I was at one point, and I don't know if I told you this, Chris, either, but I was at one point straight as can be. I used to have this biggest crush on a girl in my school, in elementary school. Her name was Cinda Lovett. I loved her. Everything was Cinda Lovett. Cinda Lovett this and Cinda Lovett that. But when I got locked up for the garbage that wasn't true, and Satan had me captive in prison for 12 years of my life, and I started having these feelings or thoughts about other men, and I discussed it with my therapist, that's when everyone said, it's okay. You can be that way. It's not wrong. It's just your feelings, and it's okay as long as it's healthy. God don't consider anything you do with a man if you're a man, or anything you do with a woman if you're a woman healthy. That is not healthy. God's design is for man to populate the earth. Can a man and a man populate the earth? No. And some people say, well, yes, they can. They can adopt. That is not populating the earth. That is not in any way. Someone else already had that kid, and they gave it to you. That's not you populating the earth. That's just you being lazy. Don't get me wrong. There are kids out there, are kids out there who, need, who need to have a family. But you can't physically populate the earth with your man because it's, there's no reproductive organs in there. You can't reproduce. And the main goal in this world is to preach the gospel and to what? Populate the earth, reproduce. It says, one of the greatest commandments says, it says to what? Be fruitful and multiply. How can you multiply if you're with a man and you're a man? And, and to add to that, um, I have a joke. Go ahead. God did not create Adam and Steve, he created Adam and Eve. Absolutely, that does deserve a laugh track there. <laughs> oh, yes, God did not create Adam and Steve, he created Adam and Eve. There's the biggest thing in the world. It's just the way it is. God made man and woman. 
God made one man, one woman. There's nowhere in the word that it says one man, one man, or one woman, one woman. No, God created one man, one woman. And that means a physical woman. God never created one man and one international woman. You ever heard of that phrase now? I think they call her international women or something to that effect. Basically, basically what an international woman is, is a transgender man or a transgender <laughs> woman. They're called international women. And uh, did you know that, you ever heard the, the story called Little Women? I saw the movie not that long, about a year ago or so. They're now coming out with an international woman's version of an all-transgender cast. Oh, wow. Yeah, an all-transgender cast of Little Women. Come on. Huh. Come on, people. Get with the picture. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Not to be wrong, not to be mean about them, because I love people because uh, they're like that. I used to be that way. We were that way. We love people who are that way. We love them, not what they're doing, because what they're doing is pure sin. It's uh, God says love it's the person, hate the sin. Love the person, hate the sin. You got it, because it's an abomination. You're you're literally telling God that your design was wrong. Therefore, I have to fix that by being with a man. No. God never makes mistakes. God never does anything like that. The devil just has got you a hold on you real bad. And you think God made a mistake, but God never makes mistakes. God never, ever, ever makes a mistake, no matter what. And I'll say this again. There's a story that my pastor once, pastor's wife told me once during service. And she says, little boy was going through heart surgery. And, and he goes, Doctor, what are you going to find when you open me up? Broken blood vessels? I'm going to find clogged arteries and all this stuff. The little boy asks him again, Doctor, where are you going to find when you open me up? Broken blood vessels, clogged arteries, and junk. The little boy goes, Doctor, where are you going to find when you open me up? Broken blood vessels, clogged arteries, and junk. He goes, No, you're going to find Jesus because Jesus lives there. My pastor said, Jesus lives there. You're going to find him. He said, when I open you up, that's what I'm going to find. Clogged arteries, broken blood vessels, and junk. So he, he, he did the surgery on the little boy, and the little boy died on the table. Comes out, he puts, he comes out and he puts his head up onto the, uh, well, he, he gets into his little room and he starts talking to his microphone that all doctors have. And he says, well, I found broken blood vessels. I says, uh, broken arteries and clogged this and that, and everything was just, it wasn't good. He, he's now dead. And in the middle of his recording, he goes, God, what did you do? He goes, why did you bring him here and then take him home? What was the point of that? He, and God spoke to him. He says, I did that to bring one of my lost sheep back. And so he went out to the family and he, and he put his hat on he, and he informed them that their son's dead. And uh, he says, well, when I opened him up, I found broken blood vessels, clogged arteries, and all kinds of junk. He goes, but you know what else I found? Because I found Jesus, because Jesus lives there. So with that being said, Jesus, and I'm losing my train of thought again. Where whatever I was going on with that idea, it was a story about the my pastor's wife told me about something, and we're going on with. Uh, where was I going with that? Do you remember? Because I have no clue right now. But well, that was a good story. And I'm glad you guys got to hear that story. But they were talking about uh, little women being transgender people. I do remember that. And we're talking about God loving them. We love them and all that stuff too. I remember that too. And so God loves you. But God does things like that to show his love. Even though he was there for a short time. Even though he was there for a short time, God had a, that's why, God had a, has a purpose for everything in this world. And everything, that ha everything happens for a reason. But God never makes mistakes. That's what I was going at. And even though God may have killed him off and the doctor thought that was a mistake that God made, God never makes mistakes. That reason that little boy was born for was that reason right there to bring one of his lost sheep back. 
There's no mistake in that whatsoever. God never said, oops, okay, he's dead. No, God had a purpose for that little boy. That little boy was used and done. I guarantee you that little boy is in heaven right now. And I want when I meet him one day, I'd love to meet that little boy. That'd be a beautiful thing to meet that little boy. And we want to meet you too when we get to heaven. When we get to heaven, we want you to come up to us and say, you know what, chaplain? I was down in the pits at that moment and you brought that word. It was beautiful. Thank you. We want we want to we want you to be part of this. And so we want you to we want to meet you when we get there. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, well, let's get into our last announcement now. And it is this. Download the app. It is not for us. It is for you. It's for us, though, to encourage you each and every week. Whether it's the music we play during the show, whether it's the fact that you can, can, you can listen to the show, or you can make comments during the show, whether it's that the music we play, the message we preach from God, or the play buttons that you listen to, or the fact you can communicate with us through Facebook, Twitter, and email. Yes, email. And you can talk, chat with us through the portal chat or listen to the play buttons. Whatever it is that encourages you, download that app. That's why it was created for us to encourage you. To us, I should say for us, to build you up. And to build you up. That's why we created this app. For us to encourage you each and every single week. And uh, what can you do on the app? You can listen to the show, number one. Number two, you can make free comments with a free Spreaker.com account. You can make all the comments you want to. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Spreaker.com. Make all the free make all the comments you want to with a free Spreaker.com account. Also, I don't mention this, but you can download each and every single episode to any of your devices with the download button right there on the main page. Go into the main where it says Portal Chat, and right there in the main page, there's there's a whole selection of you can like this, you can like the show, you can comment on the show right there at the main page, you can download the episode, and there's even a new feature, new feature, Chris, that we haven't discussed a lot about that where. If you're listening to something, but you have to do something else, or a phone call comes in, or anything happens, and you're at a specific spot, you can go, it looks like a little book. You can click on that, and each and every segment of the episode is there. It gives you the names of the music that was playing. So if, you're, if, you're, if you just get into, that's the kind of God that we serve, but a phone call comes in, and something happens, and you don't go back to there, you just click on that little book, and you find... That's the kind of guy that we serve. And click on that, and it'll start playing straight from that spot on the app. So there's a lot of cool things happening. There's going to be some more features coming out. I'm going to be adding another play button for my church, Portage Community Chapel here in Ohio, so you guys can get with their services too if you'd like to. You can always listen to Bishop's services in Michigan. But what else can you do is you can connect with us through Facebook, Twitter, and email. You, yes, email. Go to the bottom right-hand corner of any page and click on the email button. looks like a little envelope. Then click on your email client, which is Google, Yahoo, Bing, AOL, or whatever you use. And then click Always. Type in your message. And then hit Send. Now, that seems a lot. But the next time you come to that email, guess what? You just click the email button. You type in your email, you hit send. Doesn't that sound a whole lot easier, Kristen? Go on C O M M U N I T Y C L O U D 222 at C O M. Doesn't that sound like Absolutely. It absolutely is a lot easier. One click, you type in a message, one click. Two clicks, and you type in your message, and you're done. There's nothing easier than that sending an email. And you can do that by just clicking on your email client once you click the button. Click on the word always because on Android it says always or just once. Click on that always. And every time you hit that button again, it will always go straight to that email no matter what you do. As long as you click that button there, it takes you straight to that email. So go ahead. Connect with us through Facebook, Twitter, and email. That was a patented TGIF life hack. Because, you know, it makes your life so much easier now. Who doesn't like life hacks? But what else can you do? You can listen to the three play buttons. Number one, 955 The Fish from Cleveland, Ohio. And KJIC second out of Texas. And my former church, Evangel Christian Churches. And you can get with them as well and listen to their services. Just one brief minute. 
Um, my wife just texted me.